Hazel Court loved acting, but it only took one role to turn her experience into a nightmare. However, she didn't let her fears stop her from becoming known as the queen of scream of horror films. Let's find out how she made it to the top. Also, only a small percentage of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Enjoy this video. The photo that changed her life. Court was born in 1926 in Coldfield, United Kingdom. The daughter of a professional cricketer, she set her sights on an acting career at an early age. Although her family moved to Sutton Coldfield when she was six months old, she gained her first stage experience with the Birmingham Repertory Company. Regarding her education, she decided to follow her passion. She studied drama at the Birmingham Repertory Theater and the Alexandra Theater. When her enterprising sister sent Quartz's photograph to the director Anthony Asquith, he referred her to Ealing Studios for an interview, and she was given a small role in Champagne Charlie, a salute to Edwardian Musical Hall starring Tommy Trinder and Stanley Holloway. At the age of 16, Court finally met film director Anthony Asquith in London. Court had one line in the film where she said, I've never had champagne before. But she had a better role as leading lady to the comedians Flanagan and Allen in Dreaming, followed by another period musical, Gaiety George, the film that became her nightmare. She was so good at acting, she won a British Critics Award for her flawless imitation of a crippled girl in Carnival, which was released in 1946. From that point on, she took over the film industry and appeared in numerous movies including Bond Street, Counter Spy, and Ghost Ship, which was her first ever fantasy role, and the low-budget film produced by the Danzinger brothers, titled Devil Girl from Mars, in which a leather-clad Martian comes to Earth to take men to her female-dominated domain. Lack of funds for special effects resulted in moments like that, in which a transformation shot of Lathan is achieved by a simple photographic effect of a rippling image, prompting one onlooker to comment, Court said in a 1990 interview that this low-budget film she acted in will forever haunt her. She also said that the whole cast and crew of the film got paid next to nothing. Her popularity grew when she played Phyllis Calvert's sister in The Root of All Evil in 1947, and she had a telling part as a feisty secretary whose fiancé temporarily ditches her when he falls for the charms of a vamp with a lethally jealous husband in Arthur Crabtree's serviceable adaptation of the hit play Dear Murderer. One of Court's better films was King George's Forbidden, in which she gave a spirited portrayal of a fairground ice cream vendor who falls in love with a married man while fending off the advances of a shady spy. From Comedy to Horror Hazel Court was versatile throughout her career as an actress. For several years, she was the epitome of the deceptively demure, often spunky, but English heroine in British films of the 40s. Her engaging performances in such films have become largely forgotten. However, due to Court's emergence in the 50s as the star of early Hammer horrors, made her a cult favorite with fans of the genre and earned her the label the Queen of Scream. Upon becoming a known name in the industry, Court trained as an actress at the Rank Organization's Charm School. She initially wanted to act in comedy films, but mainly continued to appear in horror films. After several more B-movies and a television series, Dick and the Duchess, in which she starred with Patrick O'Neill, Court's red hair and green eyes were seen in color for the first time when she was cast in the role which would redefine her persona. Terence Fisher's The Curse of Frankenstein, which not only changed the course of her career, but launched the Hammer Horror Cycle, stretched existing boundaries of gore, and teamed Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee for the first time. She was given her first starring role, teamed with American actor William Eath, in Meet Me at Dawn, which was Thornton Freeland's limp comedy about the escapades of a professional duelist but she followed it with one of her most memorable performances when loaned to Gainsborough Films to play a leading role in Ken Anakin's Holiday Camp. 
Anakin's first feature film after six years of making documentaries, the film captured the mood of its time with its imaginative spirit and its effective use of location footage of a real holiday camp. The film was a great success, and according to Anakin, the Hugots absolutely captured the spirit and feeling that existed after the war. But Court's following starring roles were in weak movies. Swapping Countries She co-starred in a CBS sitcom, Dick and the Duchess, which was filmed in England throughout 1957 and 1958. In the series, she played the role of Jane Scarrett, a patrician Englishwoman who is married to American insurance. In the movie, Jane claims to be an investigator living in London, a role that is played by Patrick O'Neill. During the time she was shooting the series, Court traveled back and forth between Hollywood and England, also appearing in four episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. She had parts in A Woman of Mystery, The Man Who Could Cheat Death, and in the British film series, The Edgar Wallace Mysteries, just to name a few. By the early 60s, Court had permanently moved to the United States. Court was a nurse to a mad doctor in her next Hammer movie, Dr. Blood's Coffin. Then in 1962, she made the first of three films in which she was directed by Roger Corman, the premature burial at the climax of which Ray Millen shovels dirt on her, as she lies in a grave. Court was really in there doing her own stunt. The scene required me to hold my breath for a full minute, but the crew used cork instead of actual dirt. Court described Corman's The Raven as her favorite film because everybody laughed, and it was fun to work with the biggest names of horror films, including Vincent Price, Boris Karloff, and Peter Lorre. Court said that Karloff was a great charmer, and Peter had great appeal. The actress also appeared in episodes of several TV series, including The Adventures in Paradise, Mission Impossible, Bonanza, Dr. Kildare, Danger Man, 12 O'Clock High, Burke's Law with Gene Barry, Sam Benedict, and The Wild Wild West. Private Life The actress was married to Dermont Walsh in 1949. Throughout their 14 years of marriage, she had a daughter with whom they named Sally. Sally also made an appearance along with her mother in The Curse of Frankenstein. In 1964, just one year after her divorce with Walsh, Court married actor and director Don Taylor, whom she met while they were shooting an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. The couple had two children and were married until Taylor's death in 1998. Upon retiring to bring up her family, she further developed her interest in sculpture, traveling to Italy every year to make sculptures and present her work in public galleries. After Taylor's death in 1998, she enjoyed attending movie conventions and corresponding with fans. Court died of a heart attack at her home near Lake Tahoe, California, in April 2008, at the age of 82. Her autobiography, Horror Queen, was released in the UK just a week after her death. Which one of Hazel Court's movies have you enjoyed the most? Let us know in the comments and check out our next video in this series.